Are you loving God with all your strength? Are you loving Him with all your heart? Are you loving Him with all your mind? With every ounce of your being, are you loving Him? Because, dude, I don't know about you, but I would just get my praise on. And, and I felt like I, I couldn't give God enough of my praise. Anybody been there? Like, dude, God's love should so move you that you want to just fall on your face and worship the King of glory. You know what an honor it is to worship Him? You know what an honor it is just to come before Him? He's the King of glory. Yes. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, dude. When you come into God's presence, dude, you better prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Because you're talking to the living God, the creator of heaven and earth, the CEO of the universe. You ready for this message? I'm already fired up. Yeah. As you guys know, this is the Passion Week, okay? Next weekend is Easter, okay? But this week, this is the triumphal entry, okay? That's the title of my message, the triumphal entry. How gangster yeah. is that? Yeah. We're talking about our Savior, dude. He is the OG. He holds it down, the triumphal entry. Have you guys ever heard the Christ of Farai song? Triumphal entry! Yeah, come on. It's sick, dude. You should check it out. Christ the far right, triumphal entry, dude. But dude, Jesus came in a triumphal entry, okay? Um, dude, listen, we're in, we're in the Passion Week, okay? So next week we're going to be celebrating what Jesus did for us on that cross. But dude, Palm Sunday, that's this Sunday, it, it's, it's an important celebration in Christianity because we're remembering... Jesus, his proclamation of his kingdom. You guys know that Jesus did that. He, he said he was king and God and Lord. But let me ask you something. How did he do this? When he announced his kingdom on this planet, how did he do it? Did he come with this entourage of dancers swirling and, and mighty horses and flowing robes and gold and have you ever seen Aladdin? You guys remember Aladdin? Every, raise your hand if you've seen Aladdin. Remember when Prince Ali wanted to impress that girl and so he, he asked the genie, he's like, dude, I want to be a baller. I, I want to be like straight up like, I want to be all pimped out so I can really impress this girl. Well, dude, you know, we all know the picture. You know, there was, you know, dancing and music and trumpets. Yeah. And people getting all crazy and people throwing money. Prince Ali, la 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 la, la la <laughs> Dude, that's how kings did it back in the day. Okay, when, when you were a king and you were rolling in and you were saying, dude, check me out. Check my kingdom out. That's how they rolled. So tonight, what we're looking at is Jesus. What did Jesus procession look like when he was announcing his kingdom. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Buckle your seatbelts. Let's look at this in God's word. We're going to look at this, this, this picture, okay? We're, tonight we're going to look at Matthew 21 verses 1 through 17. Ready? As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them away. This took place to fulfill what the prophet said. Say to Zion, see your king. He comes to you riding on a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus instructed them. And they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on the donkey for Jesus to sit on, okay? And a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut down branches, palm, palm trees, and spread them on the road. And the crowds went ahead of them shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. 
That's what Jesus' procession looked like. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. First off, <laughs> you, you guys ready for this? This is going to bless you. What's so sick about Jesus' triumphal entry? What's so sick? He, he came and he, he presented himself as a, a humble king. Oh man, somebody shout humble king. Humble. See, every other king ever in all of history came with some pomp and pride to impress. They came on a, a royal steed. They, they came like straight up you get that picture, right? I painted that picture, but dude, look at how Jesus came. First of all, we look, we're looking and we're seeing a humble king. Dude, he, put, he picked a donkey. A, a donkey. Dude, like, I mean, when you think of a donkey, like, that's not like this, like, impressive animal. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus, when he was announcing his kingdom, he chose a donkey. Dude, it, it's mind-blowing. And dude, check this out. When Jesus came, he was fulfilling prophecy. And this was the prophecy that was made about Jesus. Ready for this? It said, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. On a colt, the fowl of a donkey. What a picture. What a picture. Have you ever been in, in Boulder or Denver when Obama was in town? No? The whole freaking city is closed down. How do, you, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Dude, you can't get across the city. Like, when Obama comes to town, there's so much security that you can't get to him. But, dude, not so with Jesus. He was approachable. He was the humble king. You could go up and talk to him. He was lowly. What a picture. And, and Jesus didn't come with, with the pomp and the pride and, and the, the royal entourage and all the security. He, his boys were his security. You know? His boys from Galilee. And dude, but dude, he actually came very humble. He came on, on a donkey. Okay? And his clothes weren't royalty. Okay? They, they were actually, he, had, he, he looked poor. Somebody shout my, my Jesus. He's, he, he was poor. Can I read you a scripture right now? Because if you remember, Jesus left the comfort of heaven. He, he is God, right? And he sits on the throne in heaven. But for our sakes, he became poor. Can I read you this verse? Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty, you might become rich. What a humble king. What an amazing king. Amen. His kingdom was so much different than any other kingdom on the planet. How cool is that? Here's just a couple notes, okay? On, on the verses we looked at, remember it says, Rejoice, daughter of Zion. See your king. He comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly. I want to just make a couple points from that, that portion of scripture. First thing it says, it says, your king is coming. In other words, he's on the way. He's on the way. His kingdom is coming. He is on the way. Do you believe that? He's on the way. He's on the way. The first time Jesus came to this planet, he came in this form, in this picture. Okay? He came as a servant, right? He came as a suffering servant to die for the sins of the world. But you check this out. The next time he comes, he's coming and he's bringing his kingdom with him. Yeah. He's coming. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Are you ready for him? 
Because the second time he comes, he's coming not as the lamb. He already did that. Lion. Paying for your sin, death, and mine. The next time he comes, he's coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. He's coming to power, dude. He's straight up coming to judge this world in righteousness. And if you ain't ready, if you're playing hard to get with God, and like, ah, oh, I'll get around to it. Dude, time's up, dog. Time's up. Today is the day of salvation. Today, tonight is your hour. Tonight, don't wait. Jesus could come back tonight. He is coming. Your kingdom, your king is coming. Can I get an Amen. first point I want to make. But it says that it says he's righteous. In other words, like he is just. That's the word. It, it says that he was he is just. He's righteous. Did you know that Jesus never sinned? Jesus never sinned. He, he says that he is righteous and just. He, he never sinned. You can't say that about anybody else. Can I get a witness? Yeah. You especially can't say that about no king on this planet. The, the next point I want to make is it says he was lowly, riding on a donkey. In other words, he was meek. He, he had a humble disposition. He was humble. It says, I want this same attitude to be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That although he was God, he didn't demand and cling to his rights as God, but he humbled himself. And he became a servant. And he humbled himself even further than being a servant. And he went to the cross. And because he humbled himself, it says this, that God exalted him. And gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Amen. You can either bow tonight or bow sometime. But it's going to happen. Every tongue will confess. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess. You better believe it, dude. He's humble. Holy. I, I think of another verse. It's awesome. It's Matthew eleven twenty eight. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly. He's gentle and lowly. What kind of king are we talking about? A whole different kingdom. The beautiful thing about the triumphal entry, it's a contrast. When you look at Jesus, he he's Contrast him to every other king and world leader ever. Jesus was, stands out like, what? How did you do it? But Jesus, Jesus changed the face of this planet. Not with, not with an army. Oh, come on. Not with an army. Amen. Not by force. He brought his kingdom on this planet through love and grace. Yeah. Jesus. That's how he brought his kingdom, dude. Through love and grace. Not with an army. Jesus doesn't make you do anything. He comes and he asks your permission. Will you, will you make me your savior? Will you make me your Lord? He won't make you do anything. He gave you free will. How cool is that? Not by force. Think of the other tyrants in history. They, they brought their kingdom by force. Think of Hitler. Have you, you guys have all seen those videos like where Hitler is like, you know, and everyone's like, hail Hitler, right? Dude, that was by force. Think of the dictators. Okay? They're famous. The, the dictators, Mussolini, Hitler, Stalin. They're famous for the wicked things they did. But let me tell you about this other king. His name's Jesus. He's famous for all the wonderful things he did. Hallelujah. He is God. He did it with 12 fishermen in Galilee. He was born in a manger, not in a palace. We're talking about God 
here tonight, folks. He is God. Yeah. And he loves you. And he wants a relationship with you. He died for you. He got down and humbled himself to the lowest point. He proposed to you. Think of the picture of proposal. What does the, the groom do? He, he kneels down. And he, he looks at his bride and says, you are beautiful. And, and will you marry me? I, I, I want to be your husband. And I want you to be my wife. And, and I, I'm making a commitment to you forever. Jesus did that for you. Do you know that you're the bride of Christ? Do you know that Jesus purchased his bride, the church? He bought you. And he got down on one knee, both knees, and proposed to you. What kind of king are we talking about? This is a triumphal entry, man. This is out of this world, crazy, divine type stuff. We don't think this way, do we? We don't think this way. We're like, dude, you're going to do what I say. Not so with Jesus. He said, dude, how can I get them to obey me? I'll love them so much that I'll be irresistible to them. That was God's plan. It's, it's ridiculous. His plan is straight up ridiculous. How, how is grace going to change a hard-hearted sinner? I don't know, but Jesus does it every day. Somebody shout, that's me. <laughs> oh, man, that's me. I don't know what happened, but I met the Lord, and all of a sudden, I'm broken. All of a sudden, I'm full of grace. All of a sudden, I'm a giver. All of a sudden, I'm changed. That's what Jesus does in lives. Yeah. Jesus didn't come to conquer nations, but he came to conquer your heart. He won your heart. He fought for your heart. He didn't come and like fight nations with this army. Dude, he came with his Holy Spirit and with his angels and with his word and he fought for you. How does he conquer you? He loves you. That's how he conquers you. His, his kingdom is so out of this world, crazy stuff. He does it with his love. What a king. Now I want to ask you the last question. I made three points here. Where was the procession to? Every procession leads somewhere. Well, the kings of old, they would be led to the palace. Because the palace is like the baller stuff, right? The OG, you know. Have you ever seen that show on MTV like where like all these rich people are showing off their houses? Okay. The procession. Think of the I want you guys to get the for procession in your mind. Remember? Jesus is on a donkey, okay? Sitting on a donkey. I don't know if his leg was over or what, but I picture him like just humble, like on this donkey, and his his disciples lay their 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 sweatshirts, their shirt and spread and sweatshirts over the donkey, and um, he's he's riding in, and everyone everyone started throwing down palm branches. Everyone started laying out the red carpet for Jesus. Have a red carpet. Think of the picture. Think of like the red carpet. You guys all get that picture. But but when Hollywood, when the red carpet's laid out, they're they're coming to like be acknowledged. Like, wow, man, that movie was so amazing. But dude, think of the procession. Everyone's shouting, Hosanna! You know what Hosanna means? Save us. Save us. What they were believing, what the people believed was Jesus is the Savior. He's our King. He's going to deliver us. And they were shouting, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Glory to God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. People were like all jacked up, like stoked. Are you that stoked tonight? Somebody shout, I'm about to give butt while praise my Savior. I give up while I praise my Savior. Uh, glory. I feel that like Ghost. Let me ask you something. Where was the procession to? Every other one ever led to their palace where they were pimped out in their palace. But, but Jesus 
His procession led right into the temple. What does that say? He wasn't bringing a physical kingdom. He was bringing a spiritual kingdom. Can I get a witness? He came to bring his spiritual kingdom. He, he came to the place. He came to the, the temple where he taught. Jesus spent a lot of time teaching in the temple. Remember? He spent a lot of time healing people in the temple. No wonder there was a procession. He, he went around healing people. People's limbs grew back. The deaf heard. The mute spoke. Paralytics got up and took up their bed and walked. Jesus raised the dead. Dude, it's no wonder that people were just getting buck while praising him. Because they saw him. But he's also going to the same temple where he drove out the money changers. Remember that? There were people buying and selling in the temple and he got all pissed off. If there's one thing that will piss off God, that's people that are using God for their own benefit. And guess what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, meek and mild, okay? guess what he did? He made a whip and drove them out of the temple. And then the disciples remembered later on, the zeal of the Lord consumes him. Jesus, his zeal is for the temple, for the place of worship. You know how zealous Jesus is about getting you into his presence? It's his passion. He is so passionate about getting you into a place of worship that he was willing to go to the cross next week. He, he, he went right into the temple. That, that's the kind of kingdom he is bringing, a spiritual one. Also, it shows that he's bringing not an earthly kingdom, but a heavenly kingdom. Not a temporary kingdom, but an eternal kingdom. The, the, what's so right about the triumphal entry is it was Jesus declaring himself who he is. What's so right about it, it is, is Jesus, God, is saying, this is who I am. This is what I'm like. And we really, this passion, we, we really need to remember who Jesus was, what he did, and what he's like, and what he came to do, and what a contrast he is to the whole world system, dude. Jesus took the whole world system of doing things and flipped it right on its head, dude. That's the kind of kingdom he, he came to bring, a kingdom not of this world. He said, dude, if you want to be number one, be a servant to all. Do we think that way? No, we think, our, our earthly carnal minds think like, if I'm going to get to the top, I'm going to have to kick that dude and like break that dude's leg and like I'm going to barge my way to the top. Jesus is saying, dude, not so in my kingdom. If you want to be the greatest, become a servant to all. Yeah. And he said, dude, I'm not going to just tell you to do that. Check this out. I'm going to take off my robe and I'm going to wash some feet. He's like, I'm going to show you what it means to, to be a servant of mine, to be a, in my kingdom. Let me show you what it's like. Wash some feet. Get down on your knees and, and humble yourself and, and serve. That's what Jesus did. Remember? I want this attitude to be in you that was in Christ Jesus. That although he was God, he didn't demand and cling to himself as God. But he humbled himself and became a what? A servant. A servant. Dude, can you take out some trash? Can you wash a toilet? Can you just be content with uh, being in the background? You can. T Remember what's that Lecrae song? I can take the. How's it go? Sing it. Come on. <laughs> I can take the background. You can take the front ground. And I know sometimes I get in the way. Something like that. That's it. Lecrae, check him out. He'll bless you. But guys, um, that, that's the example Jesus showed. Serving, giving, loving, humbling yourself, getting low, getting low. Dude, Jesus got low to bring you up. If you live your life that way, you won't be sorry. Can I get a witness? You won't be sorry. Because if you exalt yourself, you'll be humbled. But if you humble yourself, God will exalt you. 
in due time. You'll, you'll be on stage one of these days, but I need you just to serve a little while, some way. I want you to, to, to just take the background and, and just serve. And, and can I get a witness? Last point. Jesus' message is one of peace with God. That was his message. Not of a temporal peace. Now, if Jesus has made a triumphal entry into our hearts, he reigns there in peace and love. As his followers, we exhibit those same qualities. And the world sees the true king living and reigning in triumphing, in triumph in us. Last point. Jesus tonight wants to make a triumphal entry into your heart. That Jesus tonight is asking you. Remember, he, he asks. And Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, he said, behold, like, in other words, like, check this out, this is super sick. He said, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. He said, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock, and if you'll, if you'll welcome me in, somebody shall welcome me in. Amen. I will come in and I will sup with you. You guys know that Jesus invented what's up? He straight up invented that. I'm telling you, Jesus is OG. He invented what's up? But dude, he wants to have a triumphal entry right into your heart tonight. Remember Jesus said, dude, the kingdom of God is within you. Remember he said that? Well, dude, the kingdom of God isn't going to be in you until you invite the king to come in. Yeah. So I encourage you guys to invite the king of glory, the king of righteousness, into your life. Can we pray? Jesus, man, whoa, hallelujah. God, uh, we praise you. Right now, God, we just fix our eyes on you. That week right before your crucifixion, we, we think about how you came in your kingdom and in, in your glory and how you, you got on a donkey, God, and how people were shouting praise, God, and, and you had a big smile on your face because in John they said the, the Pharisees were like, make your disciples shut up. And Jesus said this, he said, if they be quiet, the stones will shout praise. Ah, glory. Dude, Jesus said, if the people aren't praising me right now, the stones, the rocks on the ground will praise me. You know that Jesus could make rocks praise him? They do it every day, remember? In the Bible it says, creation shouts praise. And tonight, dude, He's, he's making, we're picturing that procession. Now, guys, I want you to picture Jesus making the procession and his eyes are fixed right on you. And he's making his entry into your heart. He wants you. He left the comfort of heaven on a rescue mission to save you. He loves you. And he wants to be your God and your King and your Savior. But dude, you got to invite him in. And, and tonight, if that's you, if you're saying, Jesus, that's me, I want you in my life. God, lead a triumphal entry right into my heart, right into the Holy of Holies, into my heart. Make me holy. Bring your kingdom into my life, into my mind, into my soul, into every area of my life. I invite your kingdom into my heart. If that's you, if you want Jesus to be your king, shoot your hand up right now. Shoot it up, dude. And if you raise your hand, I want you to pray this prayer. Jesus. King Jesus. I want you to come into my life right now. Forgive me of my sin. Throw out the money changers in my heart. <laughs> God, get your whip out on the sin in my life. Get rid of it, Jesus. Come into my heart right now. Clean house, Jesus. God, I invite you into the living room of my heart right now. I invite you into the kitchen of my heart right now. 
I invite you into my bedroom of my heart. And Jesus, I invite you even into the cellar of my heart right now. The light of the world, I invite you in. Change me. Bring your kingdom in my life. Bring your kingdom into my thoughts. Give me the mind of Christ. Holy Spirit, possess me. Take control of me. You're my king, Jesus. I submit to you. I obey you. And I bow and I give you full allegiance of my life. And I shout glory to God. Hosanna in the highest heavens. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God.